much of gender inequality has its roots in differences between men and women in society. This difference manifests itself in two key ways, that women give birth and men don't, and women can breastfeed. That is the real sexual division of labour, and only that. However, what we see from that is that roles and relations are related to biology, but are much more constructed by society. That's the notion of gender roles and relations. And women tend to bear the roles around reproductive labour. So often women go into caring professions, teachers, doctors, no, nurses, not normally doctors, because doctors is seen to be a very skilled job. Nurses is seen to be something that is a caring profession, and caring is seen to come naturally to women. Thus, it is not valued as highly, economically speaking. Anything that's seen to be natural, we don't have to pay extra money for. Anything that's learned or taught or trained, we pay extra money for. Titles matter as well. If we look at women, women cook in the home. Women are cooks. What are men? Chefs. We can see that distinction is quite important because women, as cooks, earn less than men as chefs. So when men move into these roles, they change and they may become more valued because men doing the roles is seen as trained and thus valued economically. Women also often have limited mobility. When a woman gives birth, she's sure it's her child. A man cannot be sure unless he is sure his wife has only been faithful to him. Thus, women are often confined to the home they cannot engage in income generating activities and earn very little money because they're within the home, not outside it. What we find then is in many societies across the globe, women are valued only as mothers. If we think about it, often in society, when a woman gets married, she goes to her husband's house. Her husband's household might actually mean an extended family. So she often ends up living within an in-law's household. If the girl is going to go to another family and take all that education with her, would you invest in the girl? If the girl isn't going to earn an income because she's going to become a mother and those children aren't yours and they're not going to report back to you, would you invest in the girl? Obviously not. There's an economic rationale for investing in boy children over girl children. And this is one of the reasons that we see the missing millions of women. The idea that women actually live longer than men. But in some countries, the ratio of men to women is, does not reflect that. Indeed, selective birth may mean that some girls never get born when a woman finds out she's carrying a female fetus. Girls are neglected and many women die in childbirth. So maternal mortality is still a very high. If we look at issues like disasters, it's suggested that women are 14 times more likely to die in a natural disaster than men. Now, why is that the case? If we think about tsunamis, a big wave coming, you're gonna run away. Are women less able to run? Not really, but women may not be allowed to run because it's not seen as proper. Are women less able to swim? Not really, but girls may not be taught to swim because it's not seen as right. So what we see here is these day-to-day -day differences between boys and girls and women and men can have dramatic impacts in terms of life chances and life choices. And what we find across the globe then is these inequalities are persistent and pervasive across societies. And they're institutional. And there's institutionalized discrimination in schools and legal systems. And there's discrimination in societies, communities, and in the household. And this system that keeps women subordinated compared to men is this notion of patriarchy. One definition of patriarchy is the system of domination that keeps men in a position of power in relation to women. So we're not pointing the finger at individual men and saying it's your fault. What we're saying is this system constructs this. And capitalism also benefits from this system of patriarchy. Because men as workers may be exploited in the workplace. They may suffer subordination. But when they go home, they then have power over their wives. And this means then that while men may be exploited, they don't feel that exploitation as much, and the men in power can maintain that power. So we can see the patriarchal and capitalist systems feed off each other and maintain each other. And patriarchy is persistent. And who is dominating women changes from knowns to unknowns. So this idea that Western women are liberated, empowered through employment, through education, through 
entering politics, we need to question and we need to think, is it just adding another role to their existing roles while not changing the patriarchal structures?